reduced my living expenses by about 70%, and this is how I did it, living in Bali. I'm gonna talk about and answer all your questions. There's a whole bunch of people asking a whole bunch of questions about Bali. So I'm based in Simanac Beach, and that's um, really, it's a beautiful beach. Like, it's one of the best beaches in Bali. Not the best, but very incredible. Like, you'd be blown away. So first of all, the rent. So I live basically in a bachelor apartment. In Canada, I spent about two grand. And here in Bali, I spent about 200 US, 230 US. That includes free internet, hydro. Here's, here's the room right here, okay? So you can see I got a closet. There's a window, AC up there. I got a fridge, I got a working station. And they give me like a large screen t TV. And so let's talk about let's talk about food. You can go to street food, which is around um, fifteen thousand IDR, which is around one or two dollars for a meal. Or you can go all the way up to a hundred thousand IDR if you get into a little more touristy places near the beach. At Seminac Beach, where it was a little more touristy, I got this. It was a local dish, and it was uh, 150,000 IDR. That included a beer, and that comes to about 960 US. Uh, it ranges, and then of course I bought. Go to the fresh market. They have fresh fruit and vegetables, and those are also very cheap. Like you're talking pennies on the dollar for bananas, mangoes, and I get bottled water. I stock up my fridge with all that stuff. I have whole grain bread, peanut butter, things like that. So sometimes I feel like the food on the beach where it's a little more pricey and then sometimes I feel like just going to the food market which is around two dollars so coffee is kind of interesting you need a Starbucks fix they have Starbucks here and it's funny Starbucks is pretty much the same price as it is back home it's around for a cappuccino tall cappuccino it's about 56,000 IDR which is around three dollars and 58 cents if you go local, like for example, oh, there's a coffee shop right in where I live, and it's only 25,000 IDR, so it's half the price. You're looking at $1.50 for a cappuccino. For gyms, I found a really good gym that is more of a local. A lot of locals, there's incredible top of the line equipment, brand new equipment, everything I need, like you could possibly think of, even if you're like a huge gym rat, a CrossFit guy, bodybuilder, or a beginner, it had everything I needed, and it was great. And it only cost um, 300000 IDR for the whole month, which is around $20 US, which pff, blows me away. They have other gyms that get more advanced. They have spas and other treatments, and you can get really the, – the prices in gyms really can go up depending on what you want in your gym. Mine, just like you go, you work out. There's no showers. You just go changed, all ready to go, and then you leave. Um, if you want like a change room type facility, you're probably looking a little more. It could be as much as $40 US. And there, I have seen gyms here as high as even $100 US. And I even saw one gym who charges foreigners more money than the locals. So I stayed away from that. I was really annoyed by that. Let's talk about cell phones. I bought a brand new cell phone for uh, f here for 500,000 IDR, which is $32 um, US. And the same phone back home costs $100 US. So electronics seem to be a lot cheaper here I wanted to keep my original phone and my original phone plan I didn't want to cancel it just because I like to be able to still make calls back home um, but you could if you don't need to make calls outside um, Indonesia anymore you can cancel your own phone plan and you can and you can go here and the phone plans are very cheap I use telecom cell and get like a month worth of data for about ten dollars so prices are here they range a little bit surfing I did a surfing lesson, 300,000 IDR, and the guys were amazing. And it's, I thought it would just be like an hour little thing, but it actually turned out to be like a, as long as you want to go. Like until you're exhausted and you just can't get up off the board anymore, then you tell them when you want to stop. So I was, I really got my money's worth. So I did like a 40 minutes and I was spent. And then we went into the beach, had some fresh water, and went back out on the water again and spent another 40 minutes and I was toast. And, and he didn't want to stop coaching. Like he just wanted to keep going and going. And I was like, okay, I've had enough. I gotta got go home. So I got my money's worth. So that was definitely worth it. Real quickly about visas. The easiest visa to get is your visa on arrival. And that gives you 30 full days. And you get it at the airport. It's 25 bucks US. And then if you want to extend it, you just go to immigration. You extend it for 500,000 IDR, which is $32 US. If you want to get a full six-month visa, 
you can do that as well, but you have to apply for it before you come into Indonesia. If you want to do that, you can use Bali.com. They'll sponsor you. It's called the B211A, and it's 288 US, and that'll give you six full months in Bali. See the images here. And the reason I picked Simanac Beach is because A, it's really cheap to live here. There's lots of a mix of locals and foreigners. So you get to meet all kinds of people. And um, the beach is literally five minutes away from my house. So I can get there by scooter. And my scooter was $80 for the whole month and gas to fill it up, to fill up my scooter. It's about 25,000 IDR which is around um, $1.60. That'll last me a couple days, so I fill it up like twice a week. Um, parking, they do have, you do have to pay for parking recently. I think it's because the G20 Summit's here, because they didn't, you didn't have to pay for parking when I got here, but all of a sudden now you have to pay for parking down near the beach, in certain uh, supermarkets you have to pay for parking, or busy areas. So that costs 2,000 IDR, which is around 16 cents. So it's not really a big deal. So I stay at a place called Duty Three Residences, and I'll give you the, here's the map right here, and you can look it up, and you can take a look at their website. If you're into the party scene and the nightlife, and into um, the bar scene and all that, there's tons of that along the beach, and Changu is, is really close, and there's tons of clubs and party. There's more party scene in Changu. You can I know a lot of um, digital nomads like to live closer to Changu, which is a little more. Uh, north of where I am, north, yeah, north, and it's a little more partier and busier and there's more cafes, more restaurants, more shops, but it's more congested and it's a little more expensive. So, but if you just go outside of Chengdu where I am, you get kind of the best of both worlds. I'm kind of like in the heart of it all. So I can kind of like go to some of the best places within 40 minutes on my scooter to almost anywhere in um, Bali. I'm only, you know, I'm only like 20 minutes to Uluwatu, which has the best surfing in Bali. Uluwatu. And then if I go up to Changu for shopping and restaurants and partying, that's only like 10 minutes away. If I go up to Ubu, Ubud, that's like a maybe a 50 minute scooter ride, maybe 40, depending on how fast you drive. And it's absolutely all jungle, gorgeous, quiet, yogi, um, relaxation type environment. It's a beautiful place to go as well. Somebody asked how the dating is here. Um, well, let me put let me put it this way: you'll meet a ton of people if you go to surf hostels, or if you go to scuba hostels, or scuba scuba schools, or just go to the, like you'll meet people everywhere. But hostels and this this oh, and the the especially if you're into surfing, everyone that surfs is like beautiful. So. I highly recommend you learn how to surf. Bank account, uh, I found someone to help me open a bank account. And so that's, and I can, it has internet banking. And um, if you keep a balance of over uh, 2K US, you don't have to pay any fees. And then if you go under 2K and balance, you have to pay fees. I don't know what the fees are, but it is possible to get a bank account. I also have another bank account called wise.com. And it's amazing for banking um, internationally as well. So my personal plan is, this is how it's basically gonna work. I'm gonna be two months in Bali, then I have to leave because my visa on arrival expires. And then I'm gonna go to Thailand for a month. And then while I'm in Thailand, I'm gonna apply for the six month visa and come back to Bali and for another six months. So that'll give me a good six, plus, that's give me nine months and then I'll probably, I think I might make my way over to um, other parts of Indonesia.